In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. So, did you ever hear about the mystery of the Loretto Chapel? No. Loretto Chapel, you never heard this about it? church? Yeah. The story goes from 1887. Mm -hmm. There's a carpenter working on the staircase in the chapel to reach the top. It's okay. like an atrium. Yeah. And before he could finish it, he passed away. Mm -hmm. Now, the nuns in the church, they started to pray. And they prayed to St. Joseph. Mm. Prayed to St. Joseph to ask Jesus to, to bless the chapel and send someone to finish the construction mm -hmm. so that they can pray. Yeah. Now, what happened after the ninth day of their prayers, okay. a man came into town on a donkey and described as having a long white beard, long white hair, and he came with tools yeah. off the donkey, came to the church and said, I'm here to build the stairs. Obviously, they allowed him in. But the one thing he said was, you're not allowed. You guys have to give me privacy. Mm. And it's going to take me like a month. Okay. So they let him do his thing. They let him work. Mm. Before they could even give him payment or anything, even like thank him, mm. he disappeared. He didn't want anything from them. This is where it gets crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> what they say is that this staircase was a miracle. They sent researchers to look at the wood and to look at the structure and it's physically impossible to create the staircase. And he said the wood wasn't from earth? Yeah. So they, <laughs> took, a sample? <laughs> yeah. they took a sample and they tested it trying to find the exact like um species of, of tree. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't find anything. The closest they found was something in Alaska. The like hell? it was close to it but it wasn't even the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now check this out. Yeah. This is the big kicker fam. What happened? The common belief is mm -hmm. that this staircase was made by saint joseph himself why because saint joseph was a carpenter and they oh. prayed to who to saint joseph so the guy on the donkey on the was... donkey was saint joseph so yeah, we that's... can go today and yeah just you walk can literally on it. go and, and walk on it really i've heard of the loretto chapel i did not hear all about this i didn't know that they could not identify where the wood came from and that that was a new one to me and if that was the staircase that they showed that's an amazing looking staircase it looks really good let me know what you guys think about the story do you guys think it's actually true that they cannot find the species of trees that it came from and all the materials and leave some theories on if you do not think that it was saint joseph how did they get all of this wood and how did they build it? And also, do you guys think that that's an impossible structure? I mean, obviously it's not impossible if you can go see it and walk on it today. This is going to blow your mind. A startup company called BrainBridge announced today that they believe that they will be able to successfully perform a head transplant surgery in the next eight years. The way that this would work is you would take a person with a perfectly healthy and active brain, but their body has cancer or paralysis and transplant it to a brain dead donor body. What's crazy is that they said that by doing this, the person that's receiving the new body would still be able to maintain their memories, cognitive abilities, and consciousness. They say that the brain could last several hundred years if it had a good working body and that that might be a potential in the future, but that this would also give people with different ailments a second chance. The procedure is advanced and way over my head, but it uses robotics and AI technology to make sure that the precisions and refusing are exact. It's crazy because you have to wonder if somebody that was 6'4 will end up 5'6 or the other way around. The company's tagline is breathing life into new bodies one head at a time. It almost seems like this wouldn't be real, but you can all go ahead and check it out. And everybody has done an article about it. It is just absolutely insane. So my question to you is, would you get a new body and have your head transplanted if you had the chance? Very interesting to me. It seems extremely futuristic. And I remember quite a few years ago when they were trying to do that one head transplant, the first ever Ever, and the guy backed out of it after years of agreeing to do it, which I agree, it's a very scary thing and I wouldn't probably want to go through it as well. But I remember hearing about that and I was actually kind of excited about that type of practice because it gives people a huge opportunity. But I can see where some people would look at this as something we should not be doing. So let me know in the comments of what you guys think about this. Do you guys think it's too extreme or do you think that this is actually something that people could benefit off of. Let me know in the comments. I am extremely interested on this one. On Father's Day weekend, 1969, six-year-old Dennis Martin, his brother, 
His father and his grandfather headed up to the Smoky Mountains to go camping. This was a family tradition on Father's Day, and they were really excited about it. They get to the same campsite they always used. They set up. They have a wonderful first night. They camp out. And the next day, another camper in the area happened to walk by and saw that Dennis and his brother were playing there. And so this camper had kids as well. And he asked Dennis's father, hey, would it be okay if I brought my kids by? They're the same age as your sons, and they can just play together. Dennis's father says, sure, bring them down. And so the man goes, gets his kids, they come back, and before long, all the kids are playing hide-and-seek. Now, Dennis's father would say that he, ha he had an eye on Dennis the whole time. He was just at a distance, but watching his, his son to make sure he didn't get lost. And so at one point, all the kids are hiding from the parents. And, you know, at some point, the parents say, okay, show yourselves. And all the kids, except for Dennis, show themselves. And Dennis's father has watched Dennis go behind a particular tree. He, he watched him do it. He was watching the whole time. And so when they said, come on out, and he didn't come out, he actually wasn't that concerned because he knew exactly where his son was. And then after a few moments, he yelled to his son directly and starts walking over and says, Dennis, come out, Dennis. I know you're behind the tree. And when he finally got over there, Dennis wasn't there. Dennis's father immediately starts running off into the woods, screaming for his son. And he actually ends up running almost two miles up the Appalachian Trail, just hollering for his son, and he can't find him. And then the rest of the family had broken up and was searching the area because they're thinking, like, he couldn't have gone very far. He was literally just here. And Dennis's father had said before, like, I watched him go behind the tree. I watched him. I don't know where he is, but I watched him go behind the tree. And so they're searching everywhere, and Dennis is gone. So a huge search, in fact, the biggest search in park history ensues with 1,500 searchers that included the Army Green Berets, so the special forces got involved. They are combing a 60 square mile plot. They're looking everywhere and there is nothing. There is no trace, there's no scent. There is nothing connected to Dennis Martin anywhere. And so they go back to Dennis's father and they're like, you, you have to tell us what you saw. Again, this, this doesn't add up. If you were looking at the tree and he was right there, how is it that he has just vanished into thin air? But no one knew. That was it. No one knows what happened. There's no closure. He's just gone and they never knew what happened to him. That's pretty crazy and really sad. Quite a bit of people comment that I should check out the missing 411. So I decided to just peek into it a little bit and see what I could find and this seemed to be a more relevant video so I just decided to save it and see what he had to talk about. It makes me wonder when someone just disappears in the woods. Now if the father really was watching the kid like all the time which I kind of doubt i'm sure he was distracted at some points during this hide and seek so he wasn't just watching the woods all the time i could only imagine that that has to be a horrible feeling you just were right there watching them you looked away for a second next thing you know it's time for everyone to stop playing you try to gather all the kids around and your kid is not coming out of the tree where you thought you seen him go behind panic would definitely start to sink in really fast and it would not surprise me if there's just some creeps in the woods that prey upon children and people that are alone. And another really scary and sad thing to think about is when the kid went behind the tree, he probably still could have just kept going, trying to get deeper into the woods. You know, you want a really good hiding spot. And he could have ended up hurting himself, falling in a hole in a lake or something, and just been stuck there. That's horrible. I hate when things like this happen because there's no resolve to it and there's just this big mystery of what really happened to that person. Did they did they just get lost and they were just stranded in the woods? Did they get kidnapped? Did they just magically teleport to a different dimension somehow? Those are true mysteries that will always make me wonder what really happened. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts and your theories as to what happened exactly. Or if there's a follow-up story to this that I'm not aware of. Have y'all seen this yet? Check this out. Look. Look. Wow, we already know some of these people are not human. Did y'all see that? She literally just swallowed this fly that came out of her eye. Where did that fly come from anyways? It, was, it came out of her eye. And she swallowed it? Bro, are you kidding me? First of all, how do you not know there's a fly in your eye and you're batting your eyes, blinking your eyes like it's not there? I know you feel it. Where is it? And then fall in your mouth? Oh my goodness, y'all. I'm sure you guys know a lot of these people on media are using 4D technology, like crystal technology to basically mask themselves to make them appear that they look normal, but they're not, you know, our world is being ran by, you know, reptiles, lizzies, you know what I'm saying? Lizzies in disguise and look at her eyes. You can clearly see that's that, that doesn't look normal to me. 
the eyes do not look normal. Again, they are getting us ready for things to come, y'all. To me, that kind of looked like an eyelash falling, but nonetheless, just be, just it falling in the mouth and you could tell she was a little disturbed by it, but she kept going. That was nasty. Can't say if it's a reptile person and I don't think that that was a fly. I'm pretty certain that that was like an eyelash extension or something, maybe even a chunk of mascara. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you for being subscribed and thank you for watching. Red flag should go over everyone's head right now. You're talking about the President of the United States making an inquiry on something that they know is happening and they're being denied access. We had made contact with these objects and someone in the photo lab took a picture of a picture. It's an extraterrestrial on a, on a dissection with a group of doctors and what looked like some suits in the background. What does the ET look like? Fingers, Arms, legs, eyes. head. The head is covered with a towel. Apparently it was badly mutilated. Um, it had a weird, almost like a spine uh, on the front. Like we have a sternum They're called Ebens, extraterrestrial biological entities. And by the way, we have downed dozens and dozens of extraterrestrial vehicles. We're using these advanced energy weapons, but not the ones at the speed of light. What we're dealing with is not a sanctioned or even a normal black project. And I can say this with authority because I am working now with people who literally manage the black budget of the United States. What is that? Remember in April, I told y'all we're going to see demon manifestation like never before? This picture right here was just taken a few days ago. I got it off of the Facebook, it seems like the veil is lifting, don't you think? These people literally caught it just sitting there in the sky. You know kinda what that face looks like to me? Look real good? Baphomet snout. We've had a ton of demons manifesting lately. And when messing with the contrast a little bit, it looks like this. You cannot tell me that's a face. This top part seems to be like maybe a portal opening. And did you know that Orlando Brown was on live a few days ago and he literally turned into a demon and a whole bunch of people saw it and left? They said he started to lick his lips and all of a sudden he just completely changed into something else. And a lot of people said this, by the way. The masks. It's the, it's the masks that we wear in life. It's the demons that we don't see. It's the eyes that change colors. It's the people that enter uh, uh, by spirit through the mouth. Um, All these things are real. I was not the only person who foresaw a demonic manifestation coming on a whole new level after the April eclipse. They were well aware of it. So yeah, we're about to see some stuff. I wonder what that really was in the sky. It looked like a big old blurry smoke cloud or something. I can't quite tell what it is. And also, I would have liked to have seen that Orlando Brown interview where he supposedly changed his appearance or something like that because I was expecting it to show that in that clip, but it never did. Uh, at least I didn't see it. Let me know in the comments of what you think that light is in the sky. This young boy was born again. This is the incredible true reincarnation story that's going to absolutely blow your mind. This guy right here is Carl, and when he was young, some pretty insane things were going on. We know kids always have an obsession with the army, the war, planes, guns, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, pretty normal, right? But not Carl. This was a whole different level. From the age of about two or three, before he even went to school, before he went to preschool, he hadn't read any books or anything, but he knew everything about World War II. How? He could name every gun, he could name specific battles, he could even name people who apparently were in the war as well with him. Now one day, him and his father went to an air show where there were some planes flying above, and he literally pointed up to the plane, named it exactly the model and everything of that plane, and said, I used to fly those in the war. What? This went on and on and on, constantly him just saying how he used to be in the war, how he was a fighter pilot for the Germans and knew absolutely everything. Now one day the family were on holiday in Germany and actually went to visit the war graves. The young boy just ran straight over to one of the graves, started crying and collapsed on the floor right next to it. He looked up at his parents and said, that was me. They researched the name and sure enough it was a German fighter pilot who died on the date that he said he died and in the exact plane that he was talking about. Crazy coincidence or something more going on? Let me know in the comments down below. I always find reincarnation stories really, really interesting. It just always makes me wonder what children actually go through when they're experiencing those reoccurring memories and past lives. If that's really what they're experiencing,
I don't know, I can ramble on about this one for a while, I don't want to make it too winded. Let me know in the comments on your thoughts about reincarnation. What do you think that children deal with and how they feel when they're sharing the souls of someone from the past? Or do you think that they are not sharing souls, that that is their soul from the past? Let me know because I'm very interested about this topic. It took me a second to actually see it, but looking at it, I can see the glowing eyes. I kind of think that that might be a deer. It's haunted place on the entire earth. 30 East Drive, located in West Yorkshire in the United Kingdom, is reported to be one of, if not the most haunted locations on earth, with activity here being so intense, causing multiple families to randomly leave, one family completely abandoning their home in the 1970s. Now, if you look at some of the footage and photos that people have captured in this place, if you're easily scared, just keep on scrolling. Poltergeist activity here is rife, with many ghost hunters, priests, and other people who have investigated this place claiming that it is deadly haunted. Strange things happening such as objects being moved, lights turning on and off, the sounds of people screaming. What was that? What? When the most well-known event happened in 1966, there was reports of photographs being smashed, and even the youngest member of the family claimed that she had been dragged by her feet straight down the hallway kicking and screaming. And although that sounds fake, they literally found fingerprints and scratch marks on this young girl afterwards, and the newspapers and the media dubbing this entity as the Black Monk. It's because apparently back in Tudor times, a monk used to live in this area and did tragically die here, apparently still stays in this house. Lots of YouTubers and that have actually gone and stayed in this place, so let me know if you want me to go there. Now, the house is actually owned now by Bill Bungray, who is a horror film producer, but despite owning the house, Bill is yet to even step foot inside the house or spend a night there because of everything that's happened. So, yeah. Well, to any of the viewers that are watching this video from the UK, have you heard of this house or have you seen it? And would you be willing to actually go into the house and, and see if it's as haunted as they say? So, let me know in the comments if this is somewhere you've seen or heard about because I really like haunted houses. If I was in the UK, I would definitely want to check it out. Out of nothing came a thought. What is the first hermetic principle? All is mind. Once you understand this law, once you understand this universal law that all is mind, that mind transcends space and time, it will set you free. You ever heard of a person that's talking about being in prison and they've endured many, many years of imprisonment? and some of them become enlightened, and you ask them, how did you do the time? They say their mind was never in prison. They can lock up the body, but they can never lock up the mind unless you give them authority to. Look at remote viewers. If you look at remote viewers, what do you see? You see that we're able to set our mind outside of space and time and gather intel on targets and locations. Why is that? Because the mind can transcend space and time. Once you have the knowledge of time and how it works, how to send your mind through time, you'll be free. Time does not exist. Clocks exist. When your scientists figure this out, they will rediscover what the ancients already knew. When I went to Egypt to the Great Pyramid at Giza, two million blocks of stone, time began to slow down for us. It's called time dilation. Why? Because those two million blocks of stone have so much mass that it creates a time dilation bubble around us. A person that's standing directly next to the Great Pyramid is experiencing time microns slower than the person that is a hundred miles away. Time is bendable. Time is malleable. Time travel into the future is 1000% possible. And this is what the sun is looking like today. Looking like the cosmic womb. That's that lemon. That's what Elon Musk meant. Orange is the new lemon. Look at this boy. And then you can see Planet X, Nibiru, just in the background, chilling. Look at that, boy. There must be something crossing it because... Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy.
What a time to be alive, boy. This thing is blinding, bro. I'm not going to lie. It is so blinding. Let's get it, y'all. Almost time for that solar flare. <laughs> I mean, the shape of that sun definitely does look like a lemon. I have a feeling that that's his phone's camera lens doing that effect. Not intentionally, I don't think he's doing that intentionally. I just think the phone is capturing the sun and distorting that image. Because you can still see the lens flare in the camera and it's a round lens flare. But I will have to say that is also an extremely, extremely white looking sun. That white sun kind of reminds me of what they would call a white dwarf. And it also kind of reminds me of what scientists call a white dwarf and basically means that the star is dead. And the only reason why we still see its brightness is because it's just so hot and that it could eventually cool down within millions of years. But who knows, maybe the sun has just burned off all of its fuel and it's turning into a white dwarf. Even though I think that they say that the sun still has millions of years before that happens, but... Do they really know? Let me know in the comments of what you think about this. Terrence Howard is just like the rest of Hollywood, remaking things that other people did better decades ago. The new scientific discoveries that Terrence Howard is breaking his arm patting himself on the back about are nothing new. Now, people glitch out when you say that Terrence stole his ideas, so I'm not going to say that. All I'm going to say is that he borrowed heavily from earlier influences, including Walter Russell. In fact, I've got some antique books here, including one from the 1600s, that talk about the same things. This book is a collection of Robert Flood's original works from the 1600s. Flood was a very famous natural philosopher, scientist, and mystic, and we can see his chart of the celestial monochord. Flood's monochord illustrates the step-down process from Godhead into physical matter through the use of harmonics the etheric realm of mind becoming matter through vibration. It's pretty beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Those are not your average bees. That hive was made of flesh. Meet the vulture bee. It's a stingless bee that's found in South America. And like most bees, they build beehives and make honey. The only difference is their honey is not made from nectar because they're not vegetarian. They feed primarily on the flesh of dead animals, which makes them the only non-vegetarian bee in the world. And as a whole colony, they can eat a lot of decayed meat. Like it's been recorded that they've left animals completely skeleton once they're done with them. <laughs> They're basically flying piranhas. But what's crazy is since bees need a throw up to make their honey or their beehive, it's made out of meat. It's actually called meat honey. <laughs> I didn't think there was a food that I never want to try so bad. Oh, and these bees are extremely aggressive. They're stingless, but as we now know, they could bite through meat. So yes, they will swarm you, bite you, and turn you into honey. Moral of the story, if you ever see a beehive that looks like this, trust me, you don't want that honey. I'm not gonna lie, vulture bees? sounds like a heavy metal band name and it's kind of awesome and their hive setup is wild looking that just looks like a metal band logo i've never heard of these bees before this is a new one to me i don't think i'd have the stomach to even try the honey is i don't even think it's edible could you imagine it probably smells like rotten flesh if i was to take a guess that's just nasty cool and weird at the same time i can't stop looking at the the cone structure of it it's crazy did you guys hear about that 7,000 year old artifact that they found under this building in Miami? And that's the reason why they took that building down because they knew the artifacts been under there, y'all. They're talking about this artifact is older than the pyramids in Egypt, y'all. And we already know this is the real Egypt. Check this out. First of all, had to remove a pre-existing structure. And it was well known in the archaeological community that beneath that building, there was likely to be some kind of archaeological material. How much we didn't know until that building was removed. It very quickly became clear that the depth and the, the, the horizontal extent and the significance of the archaeological site there was, was more. To put that in, in context, this site is older than the pyramids in Egypt. The site is older or as old as some of the very first cities ever built in Mesopotamia. And yet, very little is known. Y'all heard what he said, right? They purposefully took that building down because they knew there was ancient artifacts in it, right? And how come we don't know nothing about it? What What is that ancient artifact and what did they do with it? You know, all our history has been a lie, right? They have all our ancient artifacts in museums, so we can't even go look at them and nothing like that. Just like they told us in the movie Black Panther. They have all our ancient artifacts. 
And even the fact that they never told us that this is the real Egypt, y'all, goes to show y'all they will never tell us the truth. Still to this day, they will never tell us the truth. I'm hoping that we get a little bit of follow-up information for this video because I would like to know what it was exactly that they found. Let me know in the comments if you have any theories or any follow-ups for this video. Coca-Cola just signed a five-year, $1.1 billion deal with Microsoft for use of their cloud computing and artificial intelligence services. Five years ago, it was discovered that there were fluorescent nanoparticles in Coca-Cola. Now, if I were a conspiracy theorist, I might think there were more to this partnership. Pepsi is in the hot seat. I figured it was only fair since I was picking on Coca-Cola the other day. You know, those floating nanoparticle fluorescent things that everybody thinks I'm lying about. Which, by the way, I can't believe people think I sit at home making this stuff up. I promise you, I do not. But if you need more proof, stay tuned and you can watch the scientist looking at Pepsi underneath her microscope. Today I am testing Pepsi on my microscope. So we're just going to do one drop and let's see if there's anything in it because we know that Coca-Cola there is. So I've just put Pepsi Max under my microscope because I know that Coca-Cola has got nanorobots in and I've left it only for about 10 minutes. And look at this. Look at this structure that's built. I mean, it's only been on my microscope a very, very short time and this is building all over the slide. I mean, this is insane. So it's all over the slide. You can see the, the product. You can see the product in the back, the brown product that I put on the slide. But look, this is, this is built everywhere. They're highly lit and these look like networks already building. So people are saying that the sample that I just did wasn't Pepsi Max. So I am going to show you it from start to finish. So I have my product, which is Pepsi Max. I have my base slide, which is fresh. I'll buff it up so you believe me, that's, you know, that's completely buffed and new. I've got my cover slide here. Clean cover slide. I'll buff that up, make sure there's nothing on it. I have a clean pipette. There's nothing in it. It's brand new. It's just come out of, just come out of my package. That's a brand new pipette. So now I'm going to open the product. So here we are, Pepsi Max. Let's open this product. Okay. I'm now going to get my product into my pipette. I am now going to put the product, one drop of this product, on my slide. So it's on my slide now. Let's get this out of the way so it's not spilt. So you can see my product. I am now going to put my base slide, my cover slide over this. So that is the product. Excuse my plaster on my finger. It's just that I hurt my hand. Um, and this product is now on the microscope. So now I'm going to take you over to the screen. Okay, so this is the screen from this product here. This is the screen. And I've got it in dark filled. So I've got the sample now going to be viewed in dark filled. So let's focus this in and let's see what this sample does. So straight away we have got a huge amount of dots. This isn't, this has just been put on the slide. So let's see all over the sample what these dots are doing. So these are the dots. These are just like I'm seeing in the blood. They are building together. I'll take the um, light down slightly so we can see them. Let's take the light down slightly. But these are all over the screen. Now, I left this for 10 minutes earlier and these started to build. These started to build into structures. So I'm going to go over the slide with you. I haven't put this there. Obviously, you've just seen. You've just seen that there are all sorts in this. I don't know what this is. Oh, look at this. I mean, this is, I'm sorry, but this is a fall. This is what I see in the blood. This is a, a hydrogel ribbon. I haven't, I haven't put this there. I'm doing this live with you. Let me take the light down a little bit. Right, so that's exactly, if you look back at all my work, that's exactly 
like I see in the blood. These are all over this product. These are quantum dots. It's all, it's everywhere in this product, everywhere. Let me know what you guys think of this. I don't know if these are real videos. I don't know if this is proving that there's nanobots in drinks. I'm still really skeptical about drinking sodas in general, but I don't know if those are nanobots, nanoparticles, or if those are microplastics. Let me know what you guys think that they are. The most haunted places on the entire earth. In this series, we are going to be going through the most haunted places from the top to the bottom. So if you're easily scared, please just keep on scrolling. Do not watch this video. Trigger warning, this is for entertainment purposes only. This is the Adelphi Hotel located in Liverpool in the United Kingdom. The Adelphi Hotel originally opened back in 1862, so it's not short of history. But just wait till you see some of the photos and things that have happened to people that have stayed here. This hotel was thought of as the most luxury hotel outside of London in the UK. One of the most famous stories back in the 1900s, a man checked in acting kind of strange and evasive. At around 2am, the guests heard a shot coming from his room. Reports suggest that he found out his wife was having an affair, so went after her and her lover who were staying in the hotel, before doing the same to himself. People who have been here recently have reported hearing shots, fingerprints in strange places, and even some guests waking up seeing a strange man glaring at them over their bed. An investigation back in 2015 is another point for a big story. Authorities came, they found the room completely trashed. Broken windows, broken furniture, it was completely turned upside down. Yeah, a It seems like there's a lot of haunted places in the UK. Have any of you heard about this hotel? Have any of you stayed at this hotel? Do you have your own experiences? Let me know in the comments. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.